All right, we have another stamping show and tell with an Australian publication called Stamping Papercraft. It's volume one, number three. Um, I had a really hard time kind of figuring out what year this was because there is no year on the cover. And in the um, publishing credits, I just couldn't find a single um, date here. But I looked in the, uh, the magazine for um, some clues, hopefully seeing some kind of... Um, convention dates or something like that, and there was a 1998, but I don't know if it was referring to something, you know, kind of down the line, and this was in 1997, but needless to say, going back quite a ways, um, so in, I don't know how many different um, Australian publications dedicated to rubber stamping there were, this one probably goes into some general crafts, not just stamping, but it's all kind of related into the uh, in the paper arts um, category. So, anyways, um, I thought we would take a look through this. I've never gone through um, you know, a different international magazine, um, uh, rubber stamping magazine before, so I thought we would take a look here. Um, I had a distributor um, for stampscapes for several years, um, called uh, by the name of the Crafty Lady. And she sent me a copy of this because there was an article on Stampscapes at the time. Anyways, um, this is probably, you know, this is a pretty um, substantial magazine right here. And it was um, put out by Stonehouse Publications, so kind of a, a large parent company, a publishing company, as opposed to, you know, just some kind of independent um, uh, magazine, um, you know, uh, producer here, so, um, you know, uh, a pretty, uh, you know, substantial and professional um, format here, and, you know, with all the, uh, you know, the graphic designers, etc., you know, that, uh, that a publishing house would have, um, printed in Hong Kong, so, you know, foreign uh, uh, printing and whatnot, but um, pretty interesting, and going back quite a ways, you know, when, especially when it comes to rubber stamping here. So you can see some stampscapes here, and uh, Christine from The Crafty Lady had sent this to me way back when, at the time, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think I've looked through this since that, you know, those 90s, uh, uh, whenever she sent it to me. Anyways, let's go through and let's see what's going on here. This is going to be different for me because normally in like a rubber stamp madness or something like that, you would probably see something like, you know, something more manufacturer based as far as the advertisements went. I was wondering if um, we would see the same type of thing or if it'd be more on the retailer side of things, you know, people that are carrying more stuff. I don't know how many... Um, uh, manufacturers of, you know, rubber stamps and accessories there were in Australia at the time, but obviously it was, you know, gaining a lot of momentum at the time um, down there. I found this interesting right here with the mono aqua, you know, glue here. I don't know, is this real popular? It's by Tombow, but um, I don't think, I mean, I could have got this in the 90s for all I know. I don't know how, you know, what the shelf life of this is, but it, you know, I had it, this kind of roller side right here, um, I don't think works, well, I don't know, it might, maybe it's just all crusted up, I was going to, it's not a roller actually, it's a little, kind of a wider, um, rubber part, but I, I didn't look through this whole magazine, but I did see this thing right here, so that was kind of interesting, um, right down here, so, I'm going to try not to zoom in too much because I forget I zoom in, then I, I forget to zoom out. But let's take a look through here. I'm just going to do, I don't know, I always say I'm going to do a quick flip through, then it ends up being like an hour or something like that. But here's the crafty lady right here, um, advertisement, um, showing stampscapes right here. They, had, they were my exclusive retailer, like I said, down there for quite some time. Fantasia Dolls, Bears, and Collectibles. Now, see, this is more of kind of the advertisement that um, I was kind of thinking I might run into here, you know, where they carry um, several different companies, you know, um, Artistic Stamp Exchange, All Night Media, you know, Hero Arts, you know, Personal Stamp Exchange, you know, the big ones, big companies right there, Stampendous. Um, what is this? Glitters right here. 
um, kind of those, um, f uh, yeah, those were Fiskars right here, the decalage um, types of scissors and whatnot. Um, punches, you know, looks like kind of this company right here, maybe, I'm not sure. Punches were a big thing in the 90s. You know, there were, you know, some accessories coming out. Sometimes I kind of forget of the different accessories. I, I guess towards the latter 90s, maybe towards the middle, you know, mid-90s, there weren't as much, uh, quite as many accessories, and certainly not in the early 90s. But I don't know, I guess at this point in time, especially for there to be, a you know, such a dedicated, you know, um, big publisher to, to have um, kind of... A magazine dedicated to the Australian uh, stamper, you know. We had some good momentum going at that time. New releases right here from Penny Black. Still aren't art impressions. All Night Media. You don't find All Night Media and kind of those larger companies um, kind of showcased in the rubber stamping magazines. They were mostly wholesale and selling to kind of big box stores. May, I don't know. May, I, guess the, I guess the small independents carried them too. But then when they got really popular and started selling to the big box large chains you know um just smaller uh, independent stop carrying um a lot of those um uh, larger you know top probably five manufacturers a whole lot okay now this is where i found my um date here so they were saying um this was uh the second annual Australian Stamp Convention, Rubber Down Under, 1998. So it was going to be in February 21st and 22nd. Okay, so that being said, this was probably a 1997 book or publication, I'm guessing. Maybe early 97. And I didn't, I, I guess I forgot, I probably knew, but Christine from The Crafty Lady um, was the coordinator for that show. And it's in Dandenong, um, Australia. And I don't know, she goes into talking about um, kind of the community of rubber stamping and, and how the first one was, you know, I mean, it's, conventions are to sell things, but it's really just, you know, it, pro it provides a really great um, setting for just like-minded, you know, hobbyists to get together and to uh, network and whatnot. And in 97, you know, there were... Um, not like there is now, but, uh, you know, there were online types of groups and whatnot, you know, so people can meet each other for the first time at these different types of shows, you know, in Australia or wherever you were. So that's kind of interesting right there. Um, I don't know, finding that, uh, that data that, okay, so look, let's look at these books right here. So here's one right here. All you need to know about rubber stamping, the craft of paper cutting Paper Toll, Wild Origami, Marbled and Decorated Papers, Nature Printing, you know, printing with actual leaves and flowers and whatnot, Quilling, and Floral Punch Art. Okay, so this being said, you don't see, this is a magazine, I mean, it's dedicated to, you know, different types of crafting right here, but not a whole lot just on rubber stamping, you have one book right here, so that kind of gives you a little bit of the, you know, a feel of a... Uh, you know, the different, at least, you know, kind of hard copy types of publications um, out at the time. That looks like a PSX stamp right there, I'm not sure. Um, let's see, you know, Boston Ivy, New South Wales, The Stamp Trap. They later became um, the uh, distributor for um, Stampscapes in Australia at the time. They're still around, you can check out their website, but um, Jeanette uh took over um uh the i don't know what about the retail um trade of uh stampscapes in australia after the crafty lady went into kind of the manufacturing of their own um supplies they got really busy with that um let's see here subscribe and have your stamping and paper crafts magazine home delivered and re re receive up to 33 percent more value so, oh, okay, so this one was the volume one, number three, okay? So this is only the third um, issue of this uh, publication here. Three-dimensional, um, three-panel die-cut cards, you know, kind of building out like that. 
always loved uh, dimensional cards showing you how to do it in the step-by-step -step format right here. Check this out right here. Um, the acrylic T-square. Can you see that right there? Those types of things were some of the first um, rubber stamp accessories out there. So everyone's using platforms these days, right? But this right here, not this model of it, it was Stamp of Barbara, but, uh, you know, the acrylic T-square was basically the, uh, you know, that was the, uh, I don't know, the, the technology in stamping um, at the time, you know, in terms of placement and whatnot. Um, and, you know, at the time it was, you know, it's kind of revolutionary. So, I don't know, that type of thing. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, how many different positioners. I saw different positioners um, through the years um, before it got to the Misty, right? Okay, so anyways, going through here, Woodstock decorative rubber stamps, um, Sydney. Okay, so there were, you know, I don't know how many manufacturers, like I said, there were in Australia at this time. Um, portrait of an artist, Colin Thompson. Look at this type of thing right here, like these dioramas. So um, I don't know if these were hand-drawn or what. I don't know, I won't go into it too much, but... Uh, I don't know, maybe these are some of his books right here. And he's probably he, he's probably an artist right there. Uh, artist, illustrator, I'm guessing. Oh, it shows him uh, drawing, then uh, I guess coloring and whatnot. Um, looks like he was using um, Tombow markers down here. I always forget to zoom out. Um, a blender pen right here. Yeah, Tombow's right here. So, you know, we're talking about um, dye-based inks for the most part. No one was using um, uh, Copic markers, you know, alcohol markers at the time. There were Studio 2s out there at the time, but they weren't really widespread and whatnot. Um, you know, uh, brush pens with worn tips can be used for shading, you know, so... Those, you know, these are the different types of tips that were around, you know, that we were talking about in rubber stamping at the time. Embossing handmade paper. Um, hand Stamped Art Australia. Limited edition rubber stamp and paper company. Interesting. What is this right here? Pamphlet books with embossing paper. Okay. Oh, it's like putting actual... Um, different types of items down and, uh, you know, doing that uh, paper pressing type of thing. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about it. Uh, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong about some of this stuff. I'm not reading all of it, but... Uh, okay, so here's the type of thing that, you know, I'm pretty um, interested in as far as looking around and seeing what types of ads we're in these magazines right here. Okay, so these ones look for the most part like independent manufacturers here of stamps. So I'd be kind of interested to know in general. I don't know if this is indicative of all the, you know, the, uh, the different um, companies that were in Australia at the time. Usually if there's one magazine out, you know, then everyone that has a magazine, you know, a, that's a manufacturer would probably look to, ma you know, advertise in those magazines. Because that's what your one kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, presentation for the world. Or that community, I should say. We didn't see this magazine, as far as I know, in the U.S., okay? Um, I think it's mostly Australia and New Zealand. But, uh, yeah. Interesting. Rolotac. I think I talked about this um, adhesive system in uh, my last video here. Crafty Lady, that was the, the, the company that carried my stamps. They had their own line of stamps as well. Always great folks to deal with, uh, to work with, etc. They they had brought um, the crafty lady had um, coordinated a trip from Australia. I don't know how many people 
in my mind, there was like 25 to 30 people on basically like a rubber stamping trip to the U.S. And it, they worked it around the Carson show. So you saw all that whole group at the, uh, the, the Carson rubber stamp convention um, back then. And by then it was, you know, rolling quite a bit. I don't know when they came, but um, then I went and taught a kind of a, did a presentation I don't think it, it wasn't a workshop, but it was kind of a demonstration at the hotel they were staying at when they were at uh, Carson, which is Carson, California, which is near, you know, it's in L.A. County. So and that's where I lived. Chinese paper cutting. Interesting. Yeah, that's a pretty nice little design there. Linton paper toll. Toll print. Oh, that's a toll print. What, what is a toll print? T-O-L-E. Tombow's right here. How many people know Tombow pens? You know, Tombow's and Marvies and the Plume. The double-tipped um, dye-based ink uh, markers. I, for some reason, I, I think some somewhere along the line that kind of got lost. Um, you know, because everyone, you know, is just Copic, Copic, Copic. Okay, so this is the Stampscapes article um, that... Uh, Christine put in there. Okay, now we were still using the tonal applicator at the time, okay? So these are all scenes that she's done. And in 97, I didn't have my full line of stamps. Well, I did at the time, but here she's using Marvy brush markers, see the Marvy pads, and everything was wood mounted stamps. Now, back in those times, shipping out, you know, boxes of wood stamps to Australia. Um, it wasn't, relatively speaking, as expensive percentage-wise as it is now. It's crazy now, you know, if someone was wholesaling or, you know, retailing uh, wood-mounted stamps in Australia, which has cost a fortune to ship. But uh, you can see her kind of step-by-step -step progression here, laying down the yellows, orange over the top of it. I was going to say it's probably this scene right here. Or is it? Yeah, it probably has that little orangish tinge down there. But a really nice, here's a double page spread, and this isn't the end of it, and it goes right here. So, you know, talk about this is what, you know, this is what teaching, you know, a certain type of scene was. It was step-by-step -step progression. So if you go on the Stampscapes website, I have a lot of lessons just like these broken down, okay? I don't know. People were able to fo follow those pretty easily, um, but... You know, what you can do, what you can sh just show in a, in a video now, you know what I mean? It's just all of this kind of information right here I could probably cover in, I don't know, a minute or something like that, showing, you know, and demonstrating in motion, you know, what we are talking about in one page of written description. I don't know, I guess stampers and everything. We all read more way back when, right? So, um, I don't know, I, I, I think we watch more probably and look, you know. It's, it's much more of a visual thing right now. Creative stamp collection, all stamps made in Australia. You know, a lot of the raw materials like rubber um, probably are closer to Australia than, you know, certainly the U.S., and the, unless the U.S. is getting it from South America or something like that in terms of rubber. I don't know. And a lot of the papers and things like that, um, there were some really great um, things like glossy card stocks and whatnot coming out of Indonesia, you know, which is fairly close to Australia, you know, relatively speaking, you know, rather than, I don't know. I don't know, wherever wherever the U.S. is getting their papers from these days. Uh, there's a lot of um, U.S. manufacturers that aren't in business anymore. There's Hero Arts right here. Um, Hero. So, you have places like Hero Arts um, selling... Um, I don't know, I, I was going to say, this was. I, I don't know if this was an ad right here um, from Hero Arts. It kind of surprised me if it is, but it says wholesale retail product. So I'm guessing that this, yeah. Okay, so this is probably the, um, the like an exclusive distributor for Hero Arts in Australia. And stamp your, um, stamp your heart out. 
right here with Hero Arts. So it looks like a Hero Arts um, magazine, but Hero Arts, the company, did not retail at all. Okay, they just wholesaled. So, yeah, stamp your heart out. Stamp your heart out. Um, you always saw different versions of that name. Stamp your art out. Stamp your heart out. Um, there might be a stamp your heart out with an exclamation mark or whatever. But stamp your heart out in Claremont, California was, I think, the first rubber stamp store. I think in the world. I mean, a dedicated rubber stamp store, not just a store that carried rubber stamps. All right, so this right here. Here you got the Tombos again. See, these were, you know, these were the pens. I, I don't know. Tombos and Laplumes, you know, were right up there in terms of, uh, you know, some of the most popular pens at the time. Um, this one's got, I know, a lot of fly fishing right here. I did some Father's Day cards um, not too long ago. I don't know. Maybe it's been, I don't know, for all I know, it's been five years or something like that, where I bought some actual flies and I put them with my fish, so it's kind of fun to get actual flies. You can get them real cheap on Amazon now, you know, a multi-pack for, I don't know, five bucks or something like that, and you can, it's fun to put a little fish and an actual three-dimensional real fly on a card, so, uh, just fun stuff. Um, talking about embossing in here, look at this, 3D window um, cards, three-dimensional cards, you know, I love uh, window cards, and windows are perfect too, because, you know, if you're looking at it from um, the inside out, you know, it wouldn't be so much this, where you're looking from the <laughs> outside in and you see a, a, you know, a nature scene in there. But the inside out ones, where you're looking out, it's perfect for stampscapes. But, I, oh, look, look at this little window box here. I think this is my favorite part of this one, because I've seen shutters. Well, I don't know if I've seen that little, what is that, an awning or whatever. But look at this, the the, uh, the flowers in here. See, this is really fun. I mean, you can keep it within the theme of stamping and certainly stamp, stamped flowers down here. But since this is an actual three-dimensional thing, you can actually put little, you know, plastic um, silk flowers, you know, or plants in this box down here. Wouldn't that be cool? I don't know. I, I, I just think that uh, things like... Uh, Stamping and whatnot, um, especially scenic stamping, too. Um, you know, we're not taking quite as much advantage of the three-dimensional aspect um, accessories that are out there that we can use, and simple things, too, like like this one right here, like sand and seashells like that. Someone's put actual little, those tiny little seashells on this. So I have, like, the Seaside Cove, and you can have a foreground here. Now, this is kind of, you know... Uh, set up for this photograph right here but you can have actual things like this sand or something like that and shells in the foreground that you can have the seaside cove in the background that's one of my you know the stamps i have but yeah little you know little actual shells like that i you know i'm sure people have done it before and i don't know people might have done it recently but i just don't see it happening too much um there's a little plumes in of course but yeah like those little tiny shells like that you know, it would be really fun, or like a little um, clam or something like that. You can kind of glue down onto a card. I wouldn't send it through the mail, you know. Um, you know, envelopes will get through an auto sorter, but if you kind of put it within a box in an envelope, you know, that would, you know, if you're going to mail stuff around like that, don't just throw it in a, you know, regular envelope because it'll get put through the auto sorter. and It'll smash things like that, but um, yeah, just give it a, Something substantial. So here's, see, the new Penny Black right here. But it's by Stamp It Rubber Stamps. So again, these are probably, yeah, see here, Australia's sole distributor. So you have a lot of the advertisements in these magazines for the distributors of a given line of stamps. Dinkum Incums. That's a cool um, name. The Rubber Stamp Store. I used to like this um, name of this company. Do we... Dewey, Income, and How. <laughs> you know, it sounds like three names. Dewey, Income, and How. So do we ink them and how. You know, it's pretty fun. Always like rubber stamp names and whatnot. <laughs> All the different versions of creative, you know, you, names of uh, stamp companies and stamp stores. Uh, the frame right here. This isn't uh, like a shaker box frame right here, but uh, aquatic fantasy frame like that. 
I don't know, you, you've seen those ones too where they've put that, it's kind of a layer or like a bag or something like that with water in it. You know what I'm talking about? I, I can't remember the names of those things. Okay, so look at this thing right here. All kinds of, you know, stamped um, uh, additions down here. You know, shells. Those are probably stamped and probably people cut it out and put it down here, which looks really cool. But this would be a perfect opportunity for some real shells down there too, kind of interspersed, don't you think? Well, that would be really fun. You know, being that you're going into the kind of, you know, three-dimensional um, kind of uh, thing anyway. I haven't seen these pens before. Does anyone recognize these ones? I can't read them. It looks like... I don't know what that says. Uh, I don't know what those are. Stamping and embossing. You have your little embossing gun right there. Okay, just flipping through and whatnot. All right, so ads back here. What do we have? We have about 16 kind of business card-sized ads. Um, I see a collection of... Oh, there's quilling, craft cards, crafts. I guess it's there's some... It looks like most, like, retailers here. You know, quilling supplies and whatnot. There are a couple um, rubber stamp manufacturers on here, too. Um, I don't know. I You know, I don't know where the rubber stamp manufacturer, at this time in Australia, picked up things like vulcanizers and stuff. I wonder if it was really expensive. I wonder where vulcanizers and things like that were made. Or if, you know, if it was coming from Asia, you know, they might have had kind of like different models of things. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it is now. Um, stock list, next issue here. I don't know how often this came out either. Um, I don't know, it probably says in the front here, but um, Stamp World right here. Okay, so see Stamp World um, distributed in Australia by Stamp World. What is PTI Limited? What is, I forget what the PTI stands for, but they had the rubber stampede line. Okay, so rubber stampede was one of the biggest manufacturers in the world at the time. And then they were bought out by I forget God, I was just thinking about them recently. Delta, I think. Delta? I don't know if Delta still had And then I think Delta was bought out, right? By, uh, I forget that company out of Utah. I, I don't know. I can't remember them. But Rubber Stampede, one of the big ones, you know, one of the top, you know, the big five um, manufacturers at the time. So um, those types of stamps like that, when they got into um, the big box stores, and the big box stores always had like a 50% off coupon, the rubber stamping retail, independent retailer, they just, you know what I mean? It just, they couldn't carry these things anymore because, uh, you know, they were, if they were being sold for 50% off and, uh, you know, or people were able to use their coupon for one item at a, at a big box store, um, chains, um, they just stopped carrying them. And I don't know when, when that happens, you don't have, um, people demonstrating, how to use these anymore and in those big box chain stores no one's demonstrating uh, how to use these uh, certain types of stamps or something like that or really any products you know so anyway that is the stamping paper graph volume one number three out of australia and it says new zealand here it's just like you know the u.s uh, has always has the like the canadian um price on um the different publications there so Anyway, thank you, Christine and the Crafty Lady, for sending this to me probably back in the, uh, I don't know, 1998 or something like that. And uh, I don't know, always interesting to see um, Stampscapes featured at any given time, really. But, um, you know, really special back then, you know, when we were talking about, um, you know, just a few years into um, Stampscapes. And uh, I don't know, just seeing them um, kind of... Um, I don't know, whatever, show, uh, you know, uh, exposed or whatever, you know, in different areas of the world, especially, you know, in publications at the time. Like I said, there was the internet out there, but nothing like there is now, you know, it was all, 
I don't know. I think in 97, weren't we uh, still, 97, 98, weren't we still on dial-up? I don't know when we were on dial-up until, but um, anyway, fun stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. If you recognize this uh, stamping magazine or whatnot, if you're in Australia or uh, New Zealand, I don't know when this um, publication went till until if you know any of that information maybe you can put it in the comments section down below because i don't know anything i think this was the only issue that i had but maybe you can kind of give us a the gist of when it's you know well it probably started around 97 how often did it come out were you a subscriber to it and what was the the run time of this uh, magazine when did it go until anyways okay thanks again for watching